Yeah, it's just a quick update on uh, ECOS accessory decoders, wiring lights, conventional LEDs or light bulbs up and working them digi digitally, which I've always wanted to do on the layout and I've done it today. So I connected uh, the three large um, yard lights up so they're controllable via the iPod, iPad or ECOS touch screen panel. So I've set them up on the ECOS and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, so now I'm going to press my big lights uh, on address number 50. Press that bulb and it'll power them up nicely. Switch off. It's just an easy way of operating lighting rather than having awkward switches. Simple and effective. Yeah, and of course I've set the same symbol up, uh, or similar symbol, on the track plan. I think my tea's ready. I'm going to go down in a minute. So there's my symbol for where the yard lighting is. So I'm going to press that. It lights up, and also you can see it operating on the, the iPod off, on. It's just a much simpler way. It does away with having uh, switches like that. So there's a diagram of the accessory decoder with four ports. You've got four ports, each one with five connectors um, to wire up a bulb or an LED. You wire your positive wire to C. That's where it takes the power from and then your negative earth or you know red or green wire to either A or B. And you can control uh, two sets of lights off each port. Or in my case, I've got three sets of uh, tower lights wired into just one of these, which is either A or B, with the positive going in on C, the centre one. If you're using LEDs, make sure you use, they've got resistors, otherwise they'll blow. Uh, and to power lights from the accessory decoders, you need to have a decent power supply, supplying power to all of them, the way I've got mine. So there's my accessory decoder. Um, now you can see I've got my negative earth going into B on here, which is that one, and I've got my positive which goes into C. And then I'm flicking over the switch to K84. mode to make them work continuously. That's okay if you're just using it for bulbs and stuff like that, but if you're using Pico point motors, it'll burn them out in K84 mode, but it won't burn out the Fleischmann motors because they can work in that particular mode as well as powering up bulbs and all the rest of it. If you have it in user mode, then the lights will power up and then just go off. And this is in user mode. When you power them on, they just shut down again. There is a way of getting around that by programming the, the accessory decoders, but I just flick the switch over to K84 mode and they'll stay on constantly then. And it doesn't affect the Fleischmann point motors. So, yeah, just a quick snippet on the, in K84 mode. It says uh, use this mode to operate LEDs and light bulbs whenever you do not require any specific programming so just use that mode for operating bulbs on that particular uh, module that you're going to be using but um, in my case I use the flashman point motors as well in K84 mode because they operate fine no problems at all but like you say P Pico motors will not work in K84 it will burn them out so just be aware of that so to set up a, uh, a light, say, on an accessory decoder, you press add, um, or go to signals and track, etc. icon, that one there. And then you get that. There are my accessories I've added. Uh, quite on page number three or four. Press the spanner, which is there. 
and then you press add track and signals icon points click on that pick a box there you go it's that easy and then just scroll down to light there's loads of things on here lighting you've got different types of icons you can have um, it's got a lattice mast there we go and then just add, a, add the address to it so you can uh, 1 1 means accessory decoder 1 port 1 and so on and the more you press the plus sign it's on accessory decoder 3 port 3 and so on so I'm going to go straight to um, accessory decoder 13 which is a 50 or 51 enter and then it says accessory decoder 13 port 3 and then you can add a name to it whatever you want to call the light and that's it press tick and that's it and there it is that's the icon for it then you can add that to uh, track plans or whatever and then to assign that to the accessory decoder I'll show the easiest way to do that now yeah. uh, don't forget to press the spanner menu to get out of uh, edit mode so then you can click that but nothing happens at the moment and when you set your light up and you can't get it to work even though you've set the address up and everything on the, um, the accessory decoder you think you've got it connected to um, if you then go underneath your board to where your accessory decoder is which in my case is this one and this is an easy way to get yourself out of trouble if you're having problems press and hold the program button top left and then the LED flashes not flashes you go back to your command station press the associated uh, icon you want to work and that's it it'll log on to it then automatically which I've just done there we go Yeah, another thing I'm doing, which some people probably think I'm crazy or I've lost my mind, is um, I got this bit of kit off my brother-in-law, and it's an advanced security system. But I'm going to use it to view the layout with uh, eight cameras dotted around. So when it's in full automation mode, um, I can send the Wi-Fi signal down to the iPad downstairs or a TV or wherever or you can set up your own um, website with this little unit and uh, have it viewing that way anywhere in the world or and I'm also going to link the eight cameras up to this monitor um, as well and put that on the, the chimney breast so that'll be used in conjunction with the automation when I get that going uh, probably put the monitor on the wall there that's just another bonkers idea I've got that's it for now, until the next video, which I've got some interesting stuff coming up, uh, some locos, so keep watching, thanks very much.